There's a lot of new people that want a homestead nowadays and it seems to be more prevalent than ever. More than 50% of the viewers on our channel are people that want to homestead, they don't actually have a homestead. And so in today's video, I'm gonna actually tell you five reasons why I think you should not start a homestead. Now, just so we're on the same page, Homesteading comes in all different shapes and sizes. Some people want certain animals like chickens, pigs, cows, goats, ducks, and some people just want a garden. So just so we're on the same page, not one size fits all for homesteading. Hey chickens. <laughs> if you are a lazy person, do not homestead. Homesteading takes so much time and effort to do that if you're a lazy person, maybe you can get away with it, but on our homestead, if I was lazy, I would not be able to do any of this, aside from all the projects we need to do, always feeding the animals. There's always things that need to be done, and it seems like it's always at times that you don't necessarily want to do them, but you're not lazy, so you have to. Laziness isn't not wanting to do things. Of course, we all don't wanna do things every once in a while, that just happens. But laziness is knowing you need to do something and choosing not to do it. And that's unmotivated, right? That's lazy, that's a procrastinator. But you can't be any of those things when you have a homestead because if you're lazy, the downfall is very severe like with our pigs here. If I become lazy and I don't wanna come out and feed these pigs every single day, twice a day, then they're gonna suffer, they're gonna be hungry, they're gonna be starving, they're gonna be malnourished, they're gonna be unhealthy, and I'm creating a poor environment for them if I'm lazy, but as long as I'm motivated and I'm out here twice a day feeding them and I take care of their needs right away, I get them water when they need it, then they're gonna be healthy pigs and we're gonna have a healthy environment for them, as well as our chickens and our cows and everything in between. In the past, I made a video about burnout and it was my experience. It's how you can recognize it, how to deal with it, that sort of thing. And that's totally normal. I'm not talking about burnout. I'm talking about laziness when you know things need to be done and you don't wanna do them and it's a repeated action that you're just not getting things done. That is something that you do not wanna do if you own a homestead. So if you know you're lazy, Get that under control before you start a homestead because I promise you, you're going to suffer majorly and your animals are gonna suffer the most because of your laziness or your homestead's gonna suffer your land. That's all gonna suffer because you're lazy. And don't think that you can go get animals, you can go get a homestead and it's gonna be some motivational thing for you where it's gonna change your life and you're gonna wake up every morning happy and, and life's just gonna be magical. It's not gonna happen. So. If you are unmotivated at this point in life, like I said, get it under control before you have a homestead because when all of the glitz and the glamor of homesteading life and the beauty of it passes, which it will, and there will be days where you do not wanna get out of bed because you're sick and tired of feeding the animals every day, you're sick and tired of watering the garden, you're sick and tired of doing the projects, that's gonna happen. You're gonna still have to get up and do those things even, even though you don't want to. So make sure you get that under control before you start a homestead. Please, please, please do not homestead so you can start a YouTube channel. And I know that might seem a little ironic coming from me because I have a YouTube channel and we homestead, but let me make this very clear. I homestead way before our YouTube channel. And I'm not talking about time. As far as my life, I put homesteading well before I put this YouTube channel. And if you've been watching for any period of time, you probably realize that if I get too busy, I don't make YouTube videos because my life and this homestead is more important to me than making a video and sending it out to viewers. At the time when I feel like I can homestead and have a YouTube channel, of course, this is when we make videos like right now. With how, you know, how kind of trendy it's become to have a homestead and all that, which we're gonna talk about later in the video. But right now I wanna talk about the people that are gonna have a YouTube channel and they're gonna start that right off the bat. I do not recommend it. I would recommend homesteading for some period of time. And if you're gonna have a YouTube channel and document everything from the beginning, I think that's awesome. I think everybody should have YouTube channels. I think it's a great way to inspire people. Just make sure that you, like I said, homestead first and then you have this YouTube channel.
that's a big difference instead of homesteading because I have a YouTube channel. So know the difference and know that if your motivation for homesteading is because you have a YouTube channel and the only reason you're doing anything is because you're making a video, you are not gonna have a successful time, you're not gonna be sustainable very well, you're also gonna have a really hard time getting through YouTube. So I'm gonna talk about that for a moment because we've been YouTubing for quite a long time now. It's not easy. You don't just start a YouTube channel and blow up. Some people do, but some people don't. It takes a lot of hard work. It's, you know, for us, a lot of times it's once a week making videos and that takes a lot more time than I think some people realize. Obviously I'm out here in the field making this video in front of a camera right now, but on our build videos, I'm building something and I'm filming at the same time. And when I'm done with all of that, I go through about 10 hours of footage sometimes. Our chicken coop build, if you haven't seen that, I'll link it up here. But our chicken coop build was 10 hours of footage that I had to go through and edit all the way through. And something like that takes days and days to do. If you're not motivated to homestead, you having a YouTube channel is gonna be very difficult so that's my recommendation please 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 do not start a YouTube channel before you homestead have the motivation to homestead first and then start a YouTube channel and just another side note about the YouTube channel if your motivation is to make trendy videos and let me reiterate every youtuber is trying to do something to blow up the video and if they're saying they're not motivated to get more views they're lying to you every youtuber's goal is to have more views and that's just how it is but don't go do things just specifically to have views you're uh you're most likely going to fail your youtube channel is not going to be successful you have to create a natural environment for your youtube channel and i hope to our viewers that we have created something like that for you guys. Um, very rarely do we make videos like I'm making right now where we talk more about, you know, the, the surface level of homesteading. For the most part, we're usually out doing something, homesteading and sharing that with you. So again, make sure that your motivation is homesteading and not in a YouTube channel. Now I'm in here in our orchard because the next thing I wanna talk about is that you should not start a homestead if your sole motivation is to save money. Homesteading is extremely expensive, and if nobody's told you that, I'm so sorry, I'm telling you now, homesteading is expensive. Not only do you have to go either buy land, buy a house, you know, you'll have barns, all these barns, these all cost money, the land itself is expensive, and I'm in my fruit orchard where all of these trees cost money, all of our little additions like our little uh, mini milking barn we've got right there and our little chicken coop you saw earlier in the video all of those cost money and they cost a lot of money lumber is very expensive if you do anything where you're going to want a tractor or maybe a polaris very very expensive gardening can surprisingly be extremely expensive. You got drip irrigation if you're doing landscaping. If you don't have any way to get free wood chips, you're gonna have to buy wood chips. You're gonna have to bring in topsoil. If your soil is poor, you're gonna have to buy compost. There are so many different things. You're gonna have to build gates for the garden. There are so many different things that are gonna be very expensive for gardening, which we were kind of surprised to find out. Hey buddy, right here is our Angus bull. And this guy is very expensive and our jersey cow out there in the field very expensive but her calf was free and i say all this because i want to give you the most realistic understanding of what it is to homestead and that's what this entire video is about it's not that i don't want you to homestead it's that i want you to understand the reasons why you shouldn't homestead but homesteading is so incredibly incredibly expensive all of the things that you want to create on your homestead are going to cost money very few are going to be free Nowadays, it's hard to find free stuff, and that all depends on where you live. Some of you get wood chips for free where you're at because you have tons of tree service companies near you. I don't, and so it's very difficult to get wood chips. So if I really, really want wood chips, I'm gonna most likely have to buy them. At the end of the day, if you wanna go raise a chicken, let's say you wanna raise a meat bird, you could go walk down to Walmart and get a roasting chicken for like $4, if that, and I promise you, you will never ever be able to raise a chicken for less than that on your property. And if your sole motivation is to save money, I just don't think this is the life for you in my opinion. And you're all gonna make your own choices, but this is coming from somebody that's been homesteading for a good period of time. I have a good head on my shoulders. If you're gonna start a homestead, you should be attached to it. You should have the passion for it. And you should understand that even though you're not saving money, you know where your food comes from, you're connected to the land. So many beautiful, beautiful things that are 
more beneficial than just saving some money because good food is expensive and knowing where your food comes from is expensive whether you get that from a farmer or you do it yourself it's going to be pricey those commercial farms that raise four dollar roasting chickens they raise them on concrete floors in tight spaces in these weather controlled buildings and they control everything on your homestead you're not going to be able to do that you're going to have to put them on grass you're going to have to feed them grain which you're going to get at a much higher price point than what the commercial farmers get because they do it in bulk and you do not do it in bulk you do it in 50 pound bags and let's say you want to buy a pig right you want to buy a pig and raise a pig one thing around here is i can actually buy a raised butcher ready pig that's alive for cheaper than I can feed one out for the next six months, seven months, which to some of you is probably crazy, but that's not saving money. If I raise my own pig, I am spending more money than I would be if I just go buy a pig that was raised on a feedlot somewhere and then I butcher it. It doesn't make sense, but that's the world we live in. And sadly, that's what you're gonna have to deal with when you own a homestead. Let's go, up you go. Please don't start a homestead because it's trendy. Look, I know that putting a milk cow in a, in a stanchion, getting down and hand milking a cow or picking veggies or letting the chickens out, like I know that is a beautiful thing and we all love to see it, it's wonderful. But behind all of that is a ton of work and what you see on social media is not what a homestead is, absolutely not. You are seeing like quick clips of me you know, getting Rosie in the stanchion, which is awesome. And then you're gonna see a clip of me probably milking her or whatever it is. The back end of it is literally, you know, you gotta clean up poop. That's the back end. And there's just so many other things that go on in a homestead that aren't trendy, that aren't glamorous. And if you see people on social media and you think, oh, that looks like a wonderful life or they're happy and that's what I want, you're not gonna have a very successful time homesteading. And I know that there are people on social media that are you know they have these big huge families they have these big half a million dollar million dollar houses big white houses long driveway i know that's a beautiful thing and we all want that right but that's not what homesteading is at least to me homesteading to me is more self-sufficiency living off the land being connected to nature and that is not for the most part ever glamorous very rarely is it glamorous. If you start a homestead because it's trendy, you're gonna find out pretty quick that what you thought was trendy, what you thought was cool, is not all it's cracked out to be. And sadly, that's the world we live in. We live in a pretty trendy world full of people doing things that they wouldn't typically do on their own, but do because their friend does it, or their neighbor does it, or some famous girl on social media, on Instagram or TikTok's doing it. And that, that is a pretty sad thing. That's a sad, society when we are living our lives based on trends and what new shoe this guy's wearing or you know what new car this person's driving whatever it is i don't know about you guys watching this but me personally if i see somebody wearing a shirt i'm wearing i feel like i want to rip it off and throw it in the fire i hate wearing things that other people are wearing i hate driving cars that other people are driving i hate feeling like i'm part of this cool click or whatever. I'm just not that guy. I don't wanna be that guy and I don't think I ever will be. But homesteading has kind of become that, if I'm being honest. Like I go flip through Instagram and I, I we post on Instagram and stuff. So if you wanna check out our like social media pages, you can click down there. But you go click on Instagram and it's just, it, it just, if to me it feels empty. It's not like, like they're, they're showing homestead in this like beautiful, beautiful light, which homesteading can definitely be that. But I'm gonna say 80% at least of the time, homesteading is hard, it is dirty, it's gross, you're cleaning up poop all the time. You know, it, it's failures, it's so many other things than just like me milking Rosie and drinking this fresh cup of uh, milk. It's not like that, I'm sorry. <laughs> if people around you are doing things and it's making you wanna do them too, of course, if it's coming from a natural place of curiosity and you know enjoyment, that's one thing. But if you're trying to do something because you're trying to fit in, you're doing it for all the wrong reasons, it's gonna fail, you're not gonna enjoy it. And honestly, those people that are pushing you to do something that they're doing because it's trendy, you don't. those aren't your friends. Those aren't good people to be around. You don't wanna be involved with those kind of people. So please, please, please do not start a homestead 
because it's trending, because you see it on Instagram, or because you see this beautiful, you know, girl in this long dress skipping through a garden, don't homestead because you think that's what homesteading is every single day of your life, because it is not. When you homestead, you cannot be afraid of failure. Failure is like a rite of passage to your success, and that speaks so well to homesteading because homesteading is all about learning new skills like canning and gardening and you know milking a cow raising animals having meat chickens all kinds of things building and I promise you you're gonna have some major failures along the way we have failed so many times we fail constantly and I actually welcome my failures because we do our best to learn from our failures. We don't just keep repeating the same thing over and over again. That's the important thing. So if you're somebody who has a hard time failing and needs everything to be perfect all the time, be okay with those failures because homesteading is all about that. There's gonna be days where you're just not gonna be winning and you're gonna be losing really, really hard and that's normal. But as long as you take those failures and you turn them into something beautiful, you learn from them, they're gonna become successes like they have for us over time where we have something terrible happen on the farm like we've lost a ton of meat chickens or we've lost Rosie's calf or you know you grow a plant and it just fails and you did terribly but the joy of it is we get to redo it we get to learn from those experiences we get to do them better next time and that's how you are going to have a very successful homesteading lifestyle and a lot of people aren't always used to that because not everybody takes crazy risks because when you start a homestead you are taking a major risk and that's a good thing very very good thing but what comes with that territory of course is failure at the end of the day all of you that are watching this are going to make your own choices in your life and decide what's going to be best for you but i hope this video was a little helpful and gave you some good tips from a more experienced homesteader and now i haven't been doing this for decades but we've been doing it long enough to know what are going to be some really hard times on a homestead because we've been through them ourselves so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you got something from it. Stay tuned, we've got more videos. We usually put one out once a week. You can check out our social media pages down below. Uh, we've got some building plans for our chicken coop. You can check all that sort of stuff out. We got links down below. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you wanna see more videos like this, you can hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one.